Now, tonight I'm just sharing a little about the supernatural, entering into the supernatural. Amen. Point number one in entering the supernatural is uh, there are many things, but I tonight is just a short Bible lesson, and I just want to share with you a little about how to start having supernatural forces to work in your life in a supernatural way. What I mean by supernatural forces? What do I mean by supernatural forces? One of the supernatural forces is angels. God uses angels to do many of his great works. Psalm 34 verse 7 says that the angel of the Lord encamps around them that fear him and deliver them. So the angels are not passive. Angels are not passive. Angels are active. They are both passive and active. Passive part is to camp. The active part is to deliver. Did you get it? The passive part is to camp. And then the active part is to deliver people. So, one of the names of God is the Lord of hosts. Which is the God of armies. The host is the Hebrew word for the armies. So, he's a God of the armies which are under him. And the armies are made up of angels which war. We sing the song War in the Heavenlies. They are wars of angels. I want to welcome those who are joining us online. Welcome to the program. And I know God is going to send his angel to your, to your room to bless you. Amen. Now, the Lord of hosts, there's a God of angels and armies and he is real and your natural life will become a little more supernatural. Amen. Amen. By the intervention and the involvement of angels. Angels do a lot of things. So, so many things are done by angels. In fact, there are so many angels around in the realm of the spirit that prevent things because of their camping activity, their presence. Do you see? So one of the one of the ways to deter enemies is to show visible forces that are present that you can see and it deters people. So that's one of the reasons sometimes you have armed people. But you have them to deter people who are trying to attack. Then also you have people that have concealed weapons. So that they, they, they are forced so in, in a in a in a in a presidential security apparatus, you have people that are physically openly armed and uniformed, and you can see them. And it's to tell people who are trying 
we try to come that there is a big force here. But apart from that, we have the invisible forces, people that are armed. Amen. And that you cannot see they are armed. Like here, there are people here with weapons. A number of people here have guns. Officially. That you may not be aware of. But there are people here that are armed with guns and bullets. There are people here who are trained to fight. So, but the, the, arm, the, the, the ones that are uniform, they are just to deter. So the presence of all that, you get it, is um, to deter. So I believe that is why angels camp. They camp around um, you and that prevents the devils from doing what they wish. If your angels are to move out of position, you see, do you know how long you will last? I don't think you will stay for a day before you die. Because the evil powers would implement every thing when Job when the hedge around Job was removed armed attacks took place fire death everything was destroyed all the business everything went just in one swoop if the security was removed then you see so what we don't realize is actually it's a balance of powers. Now, if you know France is a nuclear power, France is a nuclear power and um, Italy, I believe it's also a nuclear power. Germany, I don't know about Germany. Um, England is a nuclear power. The countries which fought in the Second World War and were defeated, they are all nuclear powers. I think Germany, France, Italy, I think, I don't know about Spain, and all these countries, they are heavily armed. And if Russia or anybody attacks them, you will have a very good response. That is why they don't attack them. Get it. So the camping, Europe is an armed camp. It's a camp and it makes everybody calm. If you attack me, I will attack you. And so because I'm armed and I'm ready, you also are armed and ready, you don't attack. That's why the nuclear war hasn't yet happened. Because everybody knows that the day you fire, I'll fire back. And everybody's going to burn. You know, we'll never burn alone. Anyway, like I told you, tonight is just a Bible lesson like Kenneth Higgin used to say. And it's about supernatural things. And I'm saying that God uses his angels to rot, to, 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 to do his great works. And the angels have two roles. One is passive by camping. And the other is active delivering. Saving you all the time. Saving you all the time. It's only when something happens, something goes wrong, that you see that, oh wow, this thing could have gone wrong many times. Many times. One of our brothers was on a, a flight from Nepal to the Middle East and suddenly the engine went off on one of these airlines which comes to Ghana I don't want to say because I don't want to you know yes one of these Porsche airlines yeah and the, I think the two engines went off in the end they had to make it when they landed there 
whole place, everywhere was stuff. Light, everything. They were ready. So you never know limited that almost every flight you take, hmm, except the Lord sit on the wings for us. You may never know limited. I know somebody last night by this time he was alive, but today he's dead. He was normally moving around. There was nothing wrong with him. So, receive the ministration and involvement of angels in your life. Now, how can we bring about God's supernatural involvement in your life more? And the answer is obedience. Yes, obedience. And I want to break up this word obedience into a sentence. And that is having something to do and doing it. Having something to do and doing it. Do you see? The having something to do is is the second part. But doing what God's word says to you is more important than anything else. It's usually when we talk about obedience, we, we, we assume that you know what to do or you have something to do. But that's why I'm bringing up the first part, which is having something to do in the first place. Because maybe you don't have anything to do. Now, having something to do from the Lord is one of the greatest blessings. And... I want you to turn to 1 Samuel 15 and verse 22. I think I'm going to come down. First Samuel 15 and verse 22. What does it say? And Samuel said, Has the Lord as much as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord. Amen. Behold, to obey is better than to sacrifice. What does that mean? It means that there is no sacrifice you will ever give that will be as important to God as obeying him. There is no sacrifice. Hmm? There's, there is no sacrifice, I mean, that you can ever make, no money you can ever give no gift you can ever make. No sacrifice of anything that will ever, 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 ever match what you give, what you, what you do in obeying the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I feel alone. Yeah. I feel I'm alone. There's nothing that you will ever do. Sacrifice this, give up this, kill myself for Jesus go to a mission field, go and live somewhere, give money, sell your house, pay your tithes, give up, whatever. That will ever 
be better than for you to obey God. I mean, if you are thinking of relating with God, there is not, you know, there is nothing. People think, oh, give, give your this, give that, do this. No, 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 no. Read it. It said, has the Lord as a great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord. Behold, to obey is better than to sacrifice and to hearken, to listen is better than the fat of rams. Amazing. I mean, we all think that Jesus wants us to uh, die fast. You, you'll be far, look, you are going to fast. You'll be far better of obeying God than fasting. Yeah. Unless fasting is obeying God. Because, oh, I, I can't do what the Lord wants, I'm going to fast. I, I hope I came to the right church. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. So, obedience is like something very, it's a very special act to tell me that a sacrifice, a gift, all the things that are in the Bible about sacrificing, giving, I mean, Abraham sacrificed, Jacob sacrificed, Isaac sacrificed, everybody sacrificing. And to tell me that, I mean, no matter the sacrifice I ever gave, it will never be equivalent to obeying something that God, it will not even match it. It's a shock. How many agree that it's a, it's a, it's a kind of a surprise? But is this what the Bible is saying or not? Put the scripture there. I think maybe we look at it again. And, and someone said, has the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better. Is be- I mean, always it will be better than a sacrifice. There is nothing you can do that will match it. There's nothing you can give that will match. There's nothing you can hurt yourself that will match obeying. Just obeying. To never catch up with obeying. And to listen is far higher than the fat of rams, which is like the posh part of the sacrifice. Now it gives a little, goes a little further, maybe to throw a little bit of light on why obeying, uh, not obeying is really funny. So, so in, the, in the next verse, it explains it. It says, for rebellion is as witchcraft. So rebellion is when you don't obey God. You see? So when you don't obey God, it is witchcraft. And when you don't obey, it's also stubbornness. It's stubbornness that comes into your life. So a stubborn person making a big sacrifice or a witchcraft person making a big sacrifice, you get it? A stubborn person making a big sacrifice or a, a, a witchcraft person, you get it, making sacrifice of money, of this, of that, it's, it is, it, that is why it, is, it can't ever catch up. Yeah, even if it's a big sacrifice, combined with the witchcraft of rebellion or stubbornness, because disobeying is rebellion and stubbornness together. Hard, not listening, not listening, not listening, not listening, not obeying. So it's like witchcraft plus your sacrifice and it will never work. That's the reason why it doesn't work. Do you see? And it's also rejection of the word of the Lord. And when you reject God, God has an equal and opposite rejection of you. So obedience, this, this evening, I'm just, you know, I just want us to 
just go through uh, something. Now, having something to obey, I think usually when we talk about obedience, we don't say or talk about um, having something to obey. So when you start to value obedience, you start to value having something to obey. I wish there was something I've been told to do. That's, that's how obedience is. When you start to see the supernatural nature of obedience, you start to wish for something to obey. So if I go to wait upon the Lord, I am desperately waiting for something to obey. Are you, are you there? Yes. I'm just, so if, I, if I'm, I'm, I'm coming away and I'm leaving and I have nothing to obey, I, I feel I'm flat, having nothing to do. There's just nothing. I, I, it's, like, I, it's, like, it's like I'm left as natural as I came. Yes. The, the beautiful supernatural elevation that I would have had by having something to obey, I don't have. And then you start to see that you are just normal. So, supernaturally, you must search for in your life something to obey. And you, you first find something to obey in the word of God when you read the Bible. And if you don't learn to take what you are, you are, you are getting from the word of God, then when God speaks to you in another way, you are not likely to obey him. Is that amazing? Amen. Amen. Now, in Job 36 and verse 11, you see there an amazing little scripture about obedience and it says hallelujah Serena Are you listening? If they obey him. If they obey him. If they obey him. If they obey him. They they will. Spend their days. In prosperity. Few people do that. Few people spend their days in prosperity. But he's showing you that a key to prosperity and there are years in pleasures. Wow. That sounds very strange to, to my ears <laughs> and our lives. <laughs> Days in prosperity and years in pleasures. Wow. And how do you get into such an unusual state? Where you are spending your days in prosperity and your years in pleasures. Obedience. So obedience is a key that is just obeying him. It's a key to, I don't know how the prosperity will come and how the pleasures will come. Because many people who have money don't have pleasures. By the time the prosperity comes, pleasures are gone. Mercy. Hmm? Is it not amazing? Now, today I want us to look at Leviticus 26 for our Bible study. Yeah, I know you haven't really been studying Leviticus 26.
Leviticus 26. Let's start from verse 3. Everybody say obedience. Obedience. My door door. to the supernatural. supernatural. As soon as you are obeying, you are entering supernatural things. Yes. Entering supernatural prosperity, supernatural pleasures, supernatural whatever it is. Now, if you walk in my statutes and keep my commandments and do them, and do what? And keep my commandments and do them. Change the version. Let's see what it says. If you walk in my statutes and keep my commandments so as to carry them out, follow my rules, be careful to obey my commandments. Turn to the NIV Bible, just the NIV. If you follow my decrees and are careful to obey my commandments. So it's like if you can get into the key of obedience, You see, and the opposite of obedience is what? Stubbornness and witchcraft, using other powers and rejection. Look at 1 Samuel 15, 23. Anybody who doesn't obey has these things that you are. You see, you see you are struggling with your parents, struggling with your husband, struggling with anybody about obeying. Watch out. These are the three. Look at them. Because which, the words that are mentioned, and you have to underline, witchcraft, witchcraft is the use of other power. So you are using some other power to fight, do you see, and to live by, not the power of obedience. So witchcraft, underline, stubbornness, underline, okay? And then, uh, yeah, stubbornness, and then rejection, Of the word of the Lord. You reject it. No, 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 no. 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 I have led people who have rejected me. They they don't want what what, what I'm saying. They don't want what I'm believing. Even though I'm their father. Or even though I'm the father or I'm the head. They don't want what I want. So it's rejection. And it is also stubbornness. And it's also witchcraft. Some other power is at work. Always. Whether it's in the domestic home, whether it is in church, whether it's at work, when obedience is not being followed, there's stubbornness. Stubbornness means repeatedly the same thing is being said and repeatedly you are rejecting it. It is rejection. Rejection means, no, I don't want it. No, no, I don't like you. I don't want you. I don't want your person. And often it's rejection of the person. That's why the Bible says in John 3, 16, God so loved the world, gives only begotten son, that whoever believes in him, believe in the, you have to believe in the person. If you don't believe in the person, you can't obey the person. As many as receive him, John 1, 12, he gave power. You have to receive the whole person. That's why you, if you can't obey the person, you shouldn't marry him. Because when you reject the person, it's difficult to obey his commandments. Those who rebel against me and disobey me, reject me as a person first. And then they disobey everything that I say. So obedience, okay, is very important that we realize the opposite of obedience are very negative things. And that is why once you are disobedient, oh, the sacrifice and other things you have, nothing, nothing is going to work. So obedience takes you into a realm. And Leviticus 26 shows how obedience takes you into a realm. So if you go and wait on God for three days, seven days, and there's nothing he tells you to do. You don't have the key to enter into something new. But if he tells you when he leaves you, he says, do this. It's like he's leading you into a supernatural world. When I was one day praying and I had a vision and the Lord told me to do Healing Jesus campaign and pray for the sick, I had a lot, it was like I was, I was so happy. I have, I have something to do. I have something that as I do, I will see more and more supernatural, 
support, to supernatural involvement, supernatural help, and truly it has been for about 20 years as I've been doing Healing Jesus campaign. About 20 years going from country to country. And we are just about to go to Cameroon. Oh, yes. When the Lord said to me, write a book. I didn't know what it meant, but it was opening me into something. Me, I should write a book. It was difficult to even think I, should, I could write a book. Why would I write a book? Whoever would read my book. But I was entering into a realm. I was entering into a realm. A supernatural force was coming to print 40 million books. About 40 million books. Think about how much one book, what if it cost $10 for one book? Even just to produce them. Alone. You've not done the calculations, right? It's, it's heavy. Yes, it's not a small thing. When the Lord said to me in Elmina, start churches in Ghana. Start churches in Ghana. I was in Elmina. He said, to start churches in Ghana. It was like, oh wow. That's why I said, first of all, having something to obey. And then just obeying it. Churches in Ghana. That's the churches in Ghana. More and more. We are getting near to almost 1,000 church buildings. Yes. Having something to obey and then obeying it. Yes. Now, if, if only you can get something that he says to you, do this. When the Holy Spirit told me, go and give an offering to Archbishop Duncan Williams. I should honor him. Actually, he told me I should honor him. Yes. I, oh, this was in school, eh? This was, I, was, I think I was a student in Achimota. Yes. Either I was a student in Achimota or I was in the university, but I think it must have been. I think I'm, I'm, I, I'm not sure. Because medical school, I don't know if I had such enough time for that. But honor him. Something to do. Something to do. Something to do. Something to do. Beautiful. So, most of us don't have anything to do. You are just there without any. And if you have something to do, it's like you've got it. Oh, do this. And it's like, oh, wow. And you start doing and do and do and do and do and do and do. Yes. I don't know if I'm sharing this with the right group. <laughs> Maybe the other side will be more interested. As soon as he gives you something to do, he's presented you with a door. A door to a realm where his angels will be around you. His angels will be doing things. His angels will become more active. His angels will become more involved. More They have something to do apart from just camping. You know, I've had more than one vision where I've seen visions or dreams, I don't know, where, and you see, it, because they come to my mind. One time I saw outside, I was somewhere, and I saw them, I can just see it right now. Yeah. They were all outside my door. Yeah. And it was an interesting scene. It was not in Ghana. And I had been there, I was there for some time. They were all somewhere sitting. I mean, like how is a group of guards? Some were sitting, some were standing, some were talking. They were all outside. It was like that, that's where they were. Some was sitting in front of the door, on the side. Some were two of them were chatting on that side. I can just see the scene. And you see, it just comes to me right now as I'm preaching. 
Yeah, I, 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 I forgot completely. I just remembered. And camping, they're just there. It's like they are there. They are just there. Because I was also praying in tongues at that place. Oh, yes, I was praying. And I saw them outside. They are everywhere. So, when there's something to do, they, you know, they, they, they honestly look, a li- they were not bored, but they look like that people that they, they have nothing to do except to just be there. Yeah. One day I saw outside my house an armored car, a white armored car, about twice as big as a normal armored car. It was packed. The Lord said, look outside. It was outside a big white one. He said, I, I want you to see what is outside. Yeah. Hey. I hope I'm not sharing my secrets with the wrong, with the wrong group. <laughs> oh, yes. It was outside packed. Hmm. And it was so big that I could see over the wall and I saw that it was the white. Yeah, they just, they are, they are just packed there. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him. And they have become more. I don't know why there are so many now. At first it was just one. My angel was originally just one. One day I was flying and I saw him sitting by me. He was wearing blue. Yes. He was sitting by me. I was sitting in a business class by the window and he was sitting on my side. And I was looking. I said, no ticket. <laughs> Nothing. It's on board. Yeah. No passport. Nothing. It was flying. I said, wow. May your eyes open to see beautiful things all around you. Yes. May the Lord anoint your eyes with eye salve that you may see. Yes. Like, like Elisha prayed, Lord, open his eyes that he might see. Yes. The forces and the powers that are all around just because you are the servant of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes. And if you read Rejoiner's book on when God walked the earth, when a decision had been made, yeah, look at it. Elisha prayed. And Elisha prayed and said, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man Open the eyes of the young man. Have you got some oil, everybody? I saw your eyes being anointed with oil just now. Take oil. Do you have oil? Take oil. If you are at home, online, take oil. I want you to just take a drop on your finger. I saw somebody's eyes being anointed. One of the places that anointing works. Give me some of the oil myself. I also want some of that oil. Oh, yes. Charlie, I should also benefit from this thing. Put some oil on your finger like this. And we are praying, Lord, anoint mine eyes. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw. Oh, yes. Kandala mashandola mandala baba. Now close your eyes and rub your eyes with the oil. Just rub your eyelids, of course, your eyelids, and rub it. Father, let the anointing of these eyes be real. Let eyes open. Open the eyes of the pastors of the bishops, of the leaders, of the workers, of everyone. 
Pele, Rambele, Dosa, Malan, De Belindo, Cabanda, La Banda, La Badari, De Hambro, De Lese, De Shubala, Dabre, De Bring them to me quickly. Bring them to me. Pando, Magazabale, Pijedi, Limandos, Beniro, Calabada. Now receive the anointing on your eyes. Receive the anointing on your eyes. Receive the anointing on your eyes. Receive your anointing on your eyes. Receive your anointing on your eyes. Receive your anointing on your eyes. Here. You receive the anointing on your eyes. Yeah. Receive the anointing on your eyes. Paramado le mandele beke balano more ne bele de bele. Palema de go bolona brede. Shibre de brede brode besende le beke de. La brege de brode banana monde brede ke bele de bele de bede. Ramanda la manda la balari do de bele de 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 bele de de bele de de. Palona meke te balona bede ke balado bolo de beke bele. God is anointing your eyes. Listen, listen to me. Are you there? Have you heard of John Wesley? You see, you can have a ministry like John Wesley, a very great ministry, but you won't really see any visions or dreams. I've never heard of any dream or vision that John Wesley saw. But he had a very great ministry. The fact that you don't have, it's like the person has more faith, you know. But you can also have a ministry where, you know, not even just for anything, but even for f- I don't want to say for fun, but for the enjoyment of the spirit realm and for enjoyment of God. Receive open eyes that you may see and enjoy the spirit of God working in your life more Golama shibona mi sendele baka balandere. Maran dos peli kabala brese bele shundala mamandala. Oh yes, Father, I thank you for every pastor, every bishop. Oh yes. Oh yes. Where is the oil? Dr. Go, you know, I feel like praying for your eyes. Yes. Oh yes, Father, thank you. Anoint his eyes from today. Thank you for your blessing on eyes. Thank you. Thank you for a ministry that is anointed to see. I prayed for Dr. Go on behalf of all bishops. Receive open eyes. Iceberg, come to me. I'm going to pray for you. You are also a bishop. Okay. I'm going to play for us, sister. Oh, yes. Thanks. Anoint your eyes. The Lord anoint your eyes. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Receive. 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 Mandele make a balando bolo shidedeve. Come to me. You are a pastor, aren't you? Stand here. God anoint your eyes. All pastors. Anyone is a pastor, also receiving the anointing of the Lord upon your eyes. Lift up your head, brother. Thank you, Jesus. May the Lord anoint your eyes. May the Lord anoint your eyes. And may all pastors receive an opening of the eyes. Thanks. Pagle mashaman busenda la manda capre de lebe. Pala da bacatas. All pastors. All pastors. All pastors. All pastors. Is this Gladwin? Come to me, Gladwin. Oh, yes. Lift up your hands. And for your eyes, I pray. For your eyes, I pray. For your eyes, the Lord bless you and open your eyes. Receive a big anointing, a big one, big one. Leave him down. Thank you, Jesus. Now, 
everybody lift your hand. If you are watching online, YouTube and Facebook, oh yes, receive the grace and the opening of your eyes. Oh, I see you taking journeys in the realm of the spirit, seeing things that are supersized. Wonderful things. Wonderful things. In the spirit realm. Oh yes. Oh yes. Oh yes. Thank you Jesus. Okay. Sit down for a moment. In Leviticus 26. You know. I want you to see the super journey. So we just stay in Leviticus 26. If you obey me. If you obey me. Verse 3. If you keep my commandments. If you obey me. Then verse 4. You see what's going to happen. I will give you rain. In due season. Rain. In due season. Wow. Wow. And the land shall yield her increase. And the trees of the field shall yield her fruit. Amen. Amen. So you see, if you obey, it's almost like what is your season, when it's your season for certain things, they will come on. And many things that is not the season is the season, but it doesn't happen. There are many things like that. It's the season, but it doesn't happen. And your threshing shall reach unto the vintage, and the vintage shall reach unto the sowing time, and you shall eat your bread to the full and dwell in your land safely. Change the version. Your threshing will continue until the grape harvest. And the grape harvest will continue until planting. In other words, you keep harvesting, harvesting, harvesting. And you eat all the food you want and live safely in your land. Wow. Wow. Supernatural blessings. Receive all these blessings in your life. Safety from the Lord. Safety from the Lord. Then verse 6. And I will give you peace in the land. And you shall lie down and none shall make you afraid. And I will rid evil beasts out of the land. Neither shall the sword go through your land. So peace, supernatural, just obey if you keep my commandments. You just be experiencing Leviticus 26. Amen. Verse 7. You will chase your enemies. You chase your enemies. Your enemies, you will chase them and they will be running. Supernatural chasing. I see every enemy running for his life in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Anyone with an enemy, how many have seen an enemy before? Anyone with an enemy. May you receive a supernatural grace to chase them away. Instead of them harassing you, you will harass them. And you shall chase your enemies and they shall fall before you by the sword. Obedience is doing all these things. The only thing you are supposed to do is if you obey me. (laughs) Then verse 8. And five of you shall chase a hundred. And a hundred shall put to flight 
10,000. And your enemies shall fall before you by the sword. What a blessing. Five of you will chase a hundred. And the hundred of you will put 10,000 to flight. So the enemies look like, they're, is it no supernatural? I mean, think about it. How can five people make you stronger than a hundred people? That, that's what I'm trying to explain that. The only condition for something like this is obedience. It makes you super strong. Super strong. That five people, it's not five people who put to flight a hundred children. But it's five to hundred, which is supernatural. A supernatural. That's what I'm explaining to you that supernatural things happen to obey us. If only there would be something for you to obey. I wish there would be something that you can have from the Lord. Do this. Do this. Do this. Do this. You, you start to see suddenly five putting to five fighting with a hand. I mean, this is these movies we watch like Rambo and so on. It's like a very strong person. Everybody dies and he never dies. Oh, receive super strength, super strength, super strength, super strength, super strength, super strength, super strength. And a hundred of you shall put to flight 10,000. So when you divide it, how much does it become to? So one will put to flight how much? How many? Hundred into 10,000. Please do the calculation. That means one will put to flight how many? One will put to flight a hundred. Yes. One to hundred. One person will fight with hundred men. I need hundred men to come. From that side. Yes. Hundred. Count yourself to be hundred. Count hundred please. No, no, no. Stand back, please. Let's count 10, 10, 10, 10. Go to get 100. I need a hundred people. Are you sure 10,000 divided by 100 is how much? 10, is it not one to thousand? One to a hundred, okay. Count them, I need a hundred people. I need a hundred people. <laughs> the Bible is showing us a way to become supernatural or to enter supernatural. Exactly how. Please step back so that he can count easily. Step back. taking a long time to count a hundred people. I need hundred, please. Hundred, quickly. Stand one to one, one to one. Don't force yourself, please. The rest of you, step back. Step back three steps. One, two, three. One, two, three.
This is 10 people in, in a row. And it's 10 rows. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. The rest of you, step back, please. Sorry, you didn't make the selection. Step back, please. Step back. God bless you. This is 100 people. Okay? Now, 100. Is it 100? Okay. Come on stage. Yeah. I need those of you who are conducting. Come and help. I need you to surround me here. Surround me. Think intelligently of what I'm saying and surround me. Go back a bit. Go back. Don't come close. Don't come close. Move around. Hundred of you. Come circle me. Yeah. Are you hundred? Yes. Okay. Now, make a way so that the people will see. Wait. Look at all these people. They say they are coming to fight with me. Yes. Now, ordinarily, maybe only one of them will be able to beat me by fighting. But you watch and see. together for supernatural power. Look at a hundred of them. hundred of them. It must be, it must be supernatural. hundred of them. Wow, look, Sally, I hope you are taking pictures of them. See them. I have to stand in the middle. Yeah. One to hundred. Huh? Including big ones like this guy. Hey, you stand up, stand up. No, no, not you. This one. That big muscular guys. Come on. Down. Look at them. Nothing. And all this type of power that I'm enjoying comes from what? Obedience. Yes. Obedience. Obedience. One shall chase a hundred. One will chase a hundred. Oh, yes. I hope I came to the, the right uh, church. Okay, so all of you, you are defeated by just simple obedience. Somebody's simple obedience will defeat you. Yeah. Be careful of obedient people. They are wild. You may go back to your seats. Look at it, all these guys. Wow. Look at all these guys. One person will deal with all this. So you see, you start to have supernatural strength when you start obeying. Yes. Sit down. We have, we have no clothes yet. In fact, this Leviticus 26 is quite long. But uh, it's amazing. Then it says, For I will have respect unto you and make you fruitful and multiply you and establish my covenant with you. You see, fruitful means the church will grow. Fruitful means the income will grow. Fruitful means your business will work. Fruitful means you multiply and increase in everything that you do. By what? Obedience. 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 We must believe in the power of obedience. Oh God, give me something to do. Let me be obedient. 
so that I can be obedient and I can serve you in obedience. I love it. How many love it too? What a great blessing. Amen. Oh yes. Every time the Holy Spirit has told me something to do, I'm so glad. Because I, it just gives me something. I feel like I'm supernatural. I'm just walking in something supernatural. I'm going to do something supernatural. Yeah, because he has given me something to do that is supernatural. Amazing. Amen. And, and I love it. I want him to say more. Do this, do this, do this, do this. And it's always something little. But it, you'll be surprised what is involved to do it. Just to obey God. You'll be shocked at what is involved in obeying the Lord. Then he says, and you shall eat the old store and bring forth the old because of the new. I don't really know what that means. And I will set my tabernacle among you and I will walk among you and be your God and you shall be my people. Wow. The presence of God will go everywhere with you. Amen. 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 And I am the Lord that brought you out of the land of Egypt, that you should not be their bondmen. And I have broken the bands of your yoke and made you go upright. So obedience is taking you. But if you will not hearken and not do all these commandments, if you will despise so that you don't do all my commandments, and then verse 16, you see, then you see this obedience. It's almost like you either live in the realm of supernatural obedience or you live in the realm of the effects of disobedience. And remember that you must obey God in little things and in big things. You always have to obey God in small things and in big things. Amen. Now when you don't obey God, you have what? I will appoint over you terror. Consumption. The burning. Amen. The ache, I don't know what that is. That shall consume the eyes and cause sorrow of heart. And you shall sow your seed in vain. For your enemies shall eat it. Mercy. So God says, I will appoint terror. And consumption. And the burning egg that shall consume the eyes. And cause sorrow of the heart. Amen. Amen. Verse 17. If you will not hearken. Alright. They that hate you shall reign over you. Verse 18. And if you will not yet for all this hearken unto me. Then I will punish you seven times more for your sins. Huh? Seven times more. Oh, if you even get the only the one punishment, it's not going to be easy. How much more? Seven times more punishment for your sins. This is the effect of not being obedient. So all of us who've grown up disobeying, hiding, deceiving, being clever, and trying to be smart, and find a way of disobeying with deception and flowing in the system, it doesn't lead to the right things. You must develop a proper fear for what you are dealing with. Amen. Amen. And if you don't, you lose out on what God has for you. Every step of the way, he has something supernatural for you. Amen. Amen. Then, verse 19, I will break the pride of your power and I will make heaven over your, over your heaven as iron and your earth as brass. When you dig, it will be brass, iron. Goodness. And verse 20, your strength shall be spent in vain. Huh? Your strength shall be spent in vain. 
For your land shall not yield her increase. No, these are statements which are very some way. And all is the opposite of obey. So when you do not obey, you are disobeying. So as soon as you don't obey, this is it. You spend your strength in vain. I cannot say that I've spent my strength in vain. All the years that I've lived serving the Lord, I don't believe that I've spent my strength in vain. No. You know, I am older than I was when I started. I don't think I've spent my strength in vain. I have served him with all my strength from my youth up until today. Yes. I've done everything that I can think of that he has asked me to do. Once he has said to me, do this, I spent all my life trying to do what he told me to do. Yes. I can't lie to you. I try all my life I'm trying to do. When I, when I say those words, that when I see his face and I hope that he will say, well done, good and faithful servant, it brings tears to my eyes always. Because I can see that in my heart, this is what I hope for. That if when I stand, he says, well done, it will, it will mean a lot. I think we have it in a song. You lift your eyes and he will say, well done. Well done. That he thinks that it is well done. He did well. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And if you shall walk hacking, not hacking, I'll bring you seven times more plagues according to your sins. Then I will send wild beasts which shall rob you of your children and destroy your cattle and make you feel in number. Anytime there's smallness, few in number, and your highways shall be desolate. And if you will not be reformed by me, you see, all these are supposed to reform you. If you will not be reformed by me, by these things, but will walk contrary unto me, then I'll also walk contrary to you and punish you yet seven times more for your sins. Hey, another seven times after that initial seven times which was supposed to reform you. So it's becoming 14 times punishment for your sins. Or if it's seven times, seven is 49. That's 25. And I will bring a sword upon you and you shall avenge the quarrel that shall avenge the quarrel of my covenant. What is the quarrel of my covenant? The quarrel over how you've broken his covenant. There's a quarrel there. That's the real quarrel. And when you are gathered together within your cities, I will send the pestilence among you and you shall be delivered into the hand of the enemy. Amen. When I've broken the staff of your bread, Eh? Ten women, listen, oh. Ten women shall bake your bread in one oven. And they shall deliver you your bread again by weight. And you shall eat and not be satisfied. <laughs> Ten women, eh? Like, what it means is that there is no bread at all. So the space in your oven, 10 people's bread can fit into one oven. Do you see? 10 people's bread can fit into your oven. 10 women, they all bring their bread. And when they bring their bread, you eat it by weight. Like you calculate, you calculate it. You calculate it. How heavy is the bread? And then you eat it. That's intractable poverty. Yes, it's serious. So I want you to notice that prosperity eh, is very connected to obedience. Yes. 
when I meet with my pastors who have been on the mission field and have been doing the work diligently for years, the inequalities are always from the levels of obedience. Yes. You always see that it's the ones who are more obedient to the things, they obey the things, they are doing well, they have money, they have members, they have things are working and all that. It is attendance income, attendance income. These are the two things we look at. Attendance income. Amen. Are you listening? Yes. Beautiful. Attendance and income. If you are doing a church, these are the two things we need that we can use to monitor whether what you are doing is real. Because we have people all over the place saying they are doing whatever. But at the end of the day, there are two clear things. Whether there are people that pay tithes, there are members in the church, whether you are serious as a pastor doing your work, and you see, those who are doing well, they are always the obedient ones. They do this, they do this, they do this, they do this, they do this. What, what you are supposed to preach, they preach. What you are supposed to attend, they attend. What you are supposed to say, they say. God has never sent anybody without saying what he should preach. Those of you who think that in our church we ask people to preach from the books, yes we do. Proudly so. We are very confident about it. God has never sent anybody to preach without saying what he should preach. Look at Jonah 2. Jonah. Jonah prayed again out of the Lord's belly. Okay. Then Jonah 3. I cried by reason of my affliction. Verse 2. Jonah 3. Yes, the word of the Lord came unto me the second time saying, verse 2, go to Nineveh, that great city, and do what? And preach unto it, preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee. Preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee. Not anything at all. When Jesus sent his disciples, he said, Go into the kingdom and preach saying. Preach saying. That's Jesus. He, didn't, he never sent it. All through the Bible, he said, go and as you preach saying, this is what to say. This is what you say. Don't say what you think. You know, nobody says what he thinks. It's not about what you think. It's about what message you've been given to go and say. When, Timo, when Paul was sending Timothy, he said to him in 2 Timothy 2, two he said, the things that I, I taught you, eh, when you go and meet the people, say the same thing to them. Who will be able to teach them so that they will also be able to teach. He never sent anybody without telling them exactly what to say. Change that version quickly. Yes. Amen. What does it say? And the things you've heard of me in the presence of many witness and trust to others. Change the version. Change the version. Hmm. The things, the doctrine, the precepts, the admonitions, the sum of my ministry, which you have heard me teach in the presence of many witnesses, and trust it as a treasure to reliable and faithful men who will also be capable and qualified to teach others. And trust it. And trust it. Change the version to the NLT. What does it say? You have heard me teach things 
that have been confirmed by many reliable witnesses. Now teach these truths. Teach these truths to other trustworthy people who will be able to pass them on to others. Teach these truths. There are many truths, but teach these truths. We don't doubt that there are many truths, but these are the truths we, we should teach them. Every church and every commission has what you are supposed to preach. But in our commission, this is what we teach. And that's what we are teaching, and it's all the word of God. There are many ways you can teach it. Thank God for all the different churches. Are you listening? Yes. yes. In Ezekiel, he said in chapter 2, whether they will hear or whether they will not hear, I send thee to the people. Verse 7, thou shalt speak my words unto them, whether they will hear or not, for they are most rebellious. But thou, son of man, hear what I say, and you too don't be rebellious, like that rebellious house. Open thy mouth and eat that which I give thee. Open thy mouth and eat what I give thee. And the mouth was open. And in Ezekiel chapter 3 verse 4, it says, Son of man, go, get thee to the house of Israel and speak with my words unto them. Speak with my words, not your words, not your ideas. Speak with my words unto them. For thou art not sent to a people of strange speech and of hard language, but to the house of Israel. All right? But to the house of Israel who will not hearken, they will not hear. Do you get it? Yes. yes. Son of man, verse 17, when I say that I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel, therefore hear the word of the Lord at my mouth and give them a warning from me. When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, okay? And thou givest him not warning, nor speaketh to warn the wicked of his way to save his life, that same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, his iniquity. But his blood will I require at thine hand, if you don't warn them. Yet if thou warn the wicked and he turn from his wicked ways, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. Amen. Amen. So, you see that God says, you must go and preach my words with them. Ezekiel 3 Verse 4. Beautiful. <laughs> Ezekiel chapter 5. Mm. Sorry, Jeremiah chapter 26. In the beginning of the reign of Jehoiakim, thus says the Lord, stand in the court of the Lord's house and speak unto all the cities of Judah which come to worship in the Lord's house all the words that I command thee to speak unto them. But the, the part I want you to underline is the last four words. Diminish not a word. Diminish not a word. Don't water it down. Don't change it. Don't diminish it. Don't reduce it in its greatness. The greatness of this message. Don't reduce the greatness of the message that has been delivered to you. You know, I think I'm talking to the wrong people this evening. <laughs> I think I want to talk to apostles. Yes. I think I feel I should be talking to apostles. And this is not something for unprofessional people. This is for ministry. You know, that's the realm that I'm more comfortable in. Yeah. This is a big river. Big anointing that 
has given rise and is giving rise to big mega churches and ministry all over. You have to see some of the pictures to actually see what a great apostolic oil we are living in. I'm telling you, at the same time, all over, by the grace of God. And the oil is produced from seeds. You know that oil is produced from seeds. Oil is produced from seeds. All kind of seeds produce oil. And that oil, that anointing, that power is producing the ministry that we have. And one of the great obediences is the obedience in what to preach. Yes. Obedience in what to preach. Yes. My preaching has resulted in the spawning of thousands of churches. My preaching has resulted in the production of many pastors and bishops. My preaching has resulted in building of churches. This word, this particular word. And that's why Paul said, the thing that I preach, preach the same truths. So if you want to walk in this grace and in this anointing, you see, I am, I am boasting in the anointing. I'm showing you that there is no man, nobody is, nobody is good. Nobody will follow anybody. It is the Holy Spirit who is working. And I'm saying that, catch that Holy Spirit anointing wherever you are. What, what, what topic do you preach? What topics do you preach? Okay, I'll tell you what topics I preach. I preach, Lord, I know you need somebody. That's what I preach. It has given rise to many churches. I preach message, why are you not a missionary? It has given rise to many churches. I preach message, the atmosphere. It has given rise. I preach message, the first, my first love. My first love. These are my messages. These are my seeds. I preach message, a thousand micro churches. I preach message, the mega church. I preach a message, double mega missionary church. I have no apologies. Maybe it doesn't sound so wonderful to you. This is what, this is what, this is the message, this is the message that God has given me in this anointing. Oh yes, this is it. And it has produced thousands of churches, literally. It's a very, very great and wonderful. That's why the Lord is saying, diminish not a word. Don't even change the title. Don't even change that. Now we don't want to see anybody having a camp with a different title. Preach if you can't preach this one. You know, be in another ministry. Be in, there's so many ministries you can be a part of. Yes, if you can't preach this one, be in another ministry. What what has what has your preaching produced? What has your preaching produced? What has your preaching? I'm just asking your wonderful preaching. What has it produced? Every ministry you hear different titles, very wonderful titles, which I also listen to and I benefit from. But I'm saying that this is what we have. And that is what has produced all the mega churches and the wonderful things that we are seeing. These truths. I preach what? Ready at 20. Where are the books? These people, they wouldn't even put the books there. Can't you do just a little bit more? I, this is what I preach. Can't you do? How can I say thanks? That's what I preach. I preach others. Others. I preach the privilege. I have a message called others. I have a message called the privilege. This is, this is the seed. And Ezekiel said, is, uh, Jeremiah said, this says the Lord, stand in the court of the Lord's house. Stand in the church service and speak to the cities which come to worship. All the words, not some, all the words that I command thee to speak unto them. And diminish not a word. Don't reduce any. Don't give them part. And say, I enjoy the loyalty part. But I don't want to say this part. Mm. Oh, yes. I preach you knocks in the palace. Yes. I preach you knocks in the palace. Amen. Pastors of thousands. Pastors of thousands. Love and the mega church. All out. Bima. I preach Bima. 
Most of my pastors cannot preach the ones I mentioned. They can preach loyalty, those who leave you, those who this, those who whatever. But they can't preach this. Lord, I know you need some. 90% of my pastors cannot preach all this. 90% of my pastors cannot preach this. Yeah. They, can, they can't stand and preach, Lord, I know you need somebody. There will be no spirit and no power in it. I'm not saying it as a good thing. I'm saying it as something to repent from. Yes. It's true. It's not from your heart. Yes. If you love the Lord, most cannot preach it. How can I say thanks? Most cannot preach it. Because how can I say thanks? The message is that, how can I say thanks? For all that you've done for me, the only way to say thanks is to give myself to, to you. To say thank you. Because I have to say thank you with my life. Sing that part of the song. With my life. Yeah, I'll say thanks. Let me, tell Let me tell you now, now yes. All that's on my mind. No one ever chose me and no one likes me much. Yet you liked me, Lord. Yet you chose me, Lord. And so with my life, with my life. I'll serve you now. That is how I will say thanks. Oh, 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 and you turned me inside out and you changed me. Give me brand new heart, only you, the only one who won my heart today. And I want to do all I can just to serve you, surrender my life just for you. The only one who won my heart that way. Let me tell you now. Let me tell you all that's on my mind. All that's on my mind. Out of my family, my many friends, you picked me out. You picked me out. You made me love you, Lord. Oh, you made me love you. You made me love your you word. You made me love your word. You made me serve you when I was still so young. young. Thanks. Thanks for choosing me. And you turned me inside out and you changed me. Give me brand new heart, only you. The only one who won my heart today. Let me tell you now. Let me tell you how I all feel. All that's on my mind. All that's been on my mind all these years. When I think about the day you called for me and said. When I was in secondary school. You must sing for oh, me. Oh, you must oh, sing for me. You must preach for me. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Thanks for calling thanks. me. Thanks for choosing me. How can I say me. thanks? Lord, how can I say thanks? Oh, 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 and you turned me inside out and you changed me. Give me brand new heart, only you. The only one who won my heart that way. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Let me tell so you. So let me tell you I've now. I've been thinking all these years. All that's on my mind. Oh, I've been thinking and preaching. No one ever chose me. No one likes me much. Mm. Yet you liked me. You like me. Oh, yet you chose me, Lord. Oh. And so with my life, with my life. I'll serve you, Lord. Oh, yes. That is how I will say That's thanks. That's how I'll say thanks. Oh, 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 you turned me inside out and you changed me. the song of all the songs I ever wrote 
it brings tears to my heart and to my eyes all the time because truly this is my story this is all I've been thinking about let me tell you what, what's on my mind what's on my heart out of my family and my many friends you called me and you chose me no one liked me much no one chose me but you liked me and you chose me how can I say thanks so with my life with my heart with all I have I will serve you to say thanks if it's not in your heart you can't say it you can't preach it that's all the message I've been preaching all these years it's, it's a powerful oil and I never intended to have a church as big as this I never intended even to have a church I never in, even had a vision to plant a church those church planting and how there are words I heard from people the word church planting I just I'll serve God <laughs> I'll serve God so all that is happening is they are all surprises all that is happening, all surprises. This church, a lot of churches, pastors, people serving the Lord. They are all things that are just coming along as they were never intended. It was just to serve God. And the serving God is what has generated all these things unawares. Like John Wesley said, I have become famous unawares. One day he went to a city, you know, when he was older, and the people were hailing him. He said, I have become unawares. His books he sold. You know, he, he started to prosper from me. He said, I've become a rich and a west. I never intended all these. Oh, yes. This is the oil. I want to tell you the great value of the message. If you take your time and you go through, if you can preach it, if you can preach it, you'll see. You see how people are begging me to serve the Lord. When I say begging me, like they want to. I've rarely had somebody who is not happy that he's ever been sent somewhere anywhere 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 one day I sent a missionary somewhere I only knew that it was a good place when he, when he went to another city I asked him one day go, go somewhere else then I asked him, how do you compare the two places in terms of living, in terms of danger? He said, oh, you cannot compare. And he, he began to talk about the danger of the old place. But for years, ne never said a word. Only that is the best place in the world. But when he was at this new place, he said, you can't compare the dangers of the other place to this place. Yeah. Where is not dangerous? Where well, it's not dangerous today. Yeah. So obedience is your supernatural door. And you see, one of the great simple places obey by preaching this thing. Jeez. This, just preach this. Learn to believe in. Look, if you ever think you ever preach what you want to preach, you don't even know the God you are doing. Read through the whole Bible. Ask me who has ever been asked to go and share anything that's on his mind. What he feels in whatever way. God said, even don't diminish it. Don't reduce it in any way. Don't, if I shout, don't speak softly. Don't speak softly or don't say it ambiguously when I make it clear. Don't change the message. Obey! 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 Uh, let me ask you, say you are a man of God. What has your preaching produced? You see, if a man of God is a farmer. He's planting. What, what does it produce? As you've been planting, what, 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 what has come? You go to somebody's land and you see fields and fields and fields as far as the eye can see. And you look at your little patch. Don't you think the one who has got fields and fields will have something that he knows or that he's planting that is different from what you are doing? Definitely. And it is what he planned. Kenneth Hagin has a message, three tapes, called, You Are God's Garden. i never forget that message. You are God's garden. He said that there is no surprise to what you have in your ministry. It's what you are planting. And he showed, he says, you are God's um, husbandry. 
You are God's husband man. First Corinthians chapter 3. Yes. You are God's garden. He preached three hours. He said there's no surprise. You are laborers together with God. You are God's husbandry. Change the version. It's a, a little blind. That's Kenneth kind of Hagin would say. You are God's workers. You are God's field. Change the version again. You are God's field. Change it. You are God's field. Change it again. Keep changing until you get something different. Hmm? God's field. God's cultivated field. Into brackets, his garden. That's it. Yes. You are God's garden. Obey and preach the right things. The right word. Yes. Preach the right word. When I started evangelistic work. I, I don't know whether I, I came to the right group. I don't know whether you, you want to, me to continue talking. I don't know. <laughs> when I started evangelism, you know what I said? I said to myself, I don't know. You know Billy Graham is not somebody I grew up knowing. I didn't know who he was. But I felt he was the greatest evangelist. I sat down and I transcribed every single Billy Graham message that I could lay my hands on, my fingers on. Every verse he used, every illustration he used, and the sense of the message that he was preaching, Billy Graham, as far as I was concerned, he was the greatest evangelist. And those became my notes. And I would preach what he preached. I just preach it. Because it is a seed that has produced these huge crusades. And what other wisdom is there than to take the same seeds and go with exactly without varying. Because you don't know anything. And just give the same words. Is it not logical to you? I'm not telling you to do something I don't do. Yes. I'm not telling you to do something I don't do. Every story that I found from Billy Graham is one of my stories. Yes. And I'm seeing the same effect. Yes. I'm seeing the same effect. Yes. Everywhere. For years. And I preach. And you are part of this ministry. And it doesn't occur to you that my preaching has had such an effect from America to South Africa, from Nairobi to Australia. It doesn't occur to you producing a huge ministry. It doesn't occur to you that maybe these words, do you see, delivered in the same way, not diminishing a word, could have that same effect in your life and in your ministry. That logic is lost on you. <laughs> it's amazing. It's amazing that I have to even say what I'm saying. Yes. That's why I'm saying that we have no, sh we have no apologies. And that's why Paul said in 1 Thessalonians 5.27, he used a word which is used to mean the strongest command you can give. Mm. In the Hebrew and the Greek language. He says, I charge you in King James. I charge you by the Lord that this epistle be read. Is this what it says? Does it not say, I adjure you? Or is that another version? I adjure you. Anyway, I charge you by the Lord. I command you. That this epistle, this letter, what I have written, should be read in this church. This is what should be said. The seed, powerful seed. What a blessing. What a blessing. I adjure you by the Lord. Uh huh. Yes. I adjure you by the Lord. This is that word I adjure. Remember when Jesus was on trial? He didn't answer. But when they said, I adjure thee by God, are you whatever? Then he answered, he said, I am. 
He will not respond until that command is the strongest command that you can give that you must not disobey. He didn't answer till I read it in a book called um, Evidence That, no, not Evidence That Demands a Verdict. There's another book. And they were explaining the trial in detail. And they said that it was when the high priest said, I adjure you by the living God that you tell us whether you are the son of Christ, the son of God. And Jesus said, you have said it yourself. <laughs> but he was silent. Remember the Bible says he was silent before them. But when they use that word, I adjure, you are not allowed to not answer. You are not allowed to not answer. You're not allowed to know. No, I read it as, you know, historically, you can't tell somebody, I adjure you to this, and the person will not respond. He has to respond. And that is why when Jesus was asked, this, I adjure thee by the living God. I Tell us whether you are the Christ, the Son of God. He had to respond. Now, when Paul was writing and telling the people to read his letter, he used the same word. He said, I adjure thee by the Lord to have this letter read, this particular book, and they said, make sure you read it. Same book. Don't read another one. That's how strong it is. And that's how much a blessing. Every prophet and every evangelist and every apostle it's all about obeying to keep your message what he wants you to say. Don't vary it. Say the same message with power and with belief in your heart. Yes. Yes. And truly, when I laid hands on, I, I spoke to Billy Graham. I called their office. I said, more message because I have transcribed all. Transcribed because it was not written in any book. And I couldn't find it in any audio. I have to watch the video and go through the points. And there are no points. His preaching doesn't, he doesn't say number one, number two. So it's very difficult to see. Oh, yes. Today I'm having the same result. I'm having the biggest crusade all over the place. Yes. So this is a great blessing for you. Lift your hands. May you enter into the supernatural calling of God. You know, when we have this meeting in the evening, it's about ministry. I, I, I think you shouldn't come here if you are a businessman and into business and all that kind of thing. This is about working for God. I don't want to waste time talking about how to prosper to be in the morning, but in the evening, it's just about ministry. As soon as we stray into trying to let you become a happy Christian, a good Christian. Things will not work out well. Lift your hands. Father, thank you for our new ministries. Thank you for obedience in everything. Thank you. Thank you for new levels of obedience as never before. All those watching online are being blessed with a supernatural grace. One is going to beat down 100 enemies supernaturally by supernatural obedience in every way and in everything thank you father thank you thank you thank you for this great blessing now everyone who has been called by God ask the Lord Lord Jesus what do you want me to obey you in I really really need to obey you and be obedient to you. Lord, thank you as you give us obedience, as you give us obedience, as you give us obedience. What do you give us? Something to obey and then obedience. Something to obey. Everybody here has one thing that you are supposed to obey. One thing that you are supposed to obey. Thanks. Everybody here has one thing. Father, I give you thanks and I give you praise for beautiful service this evening. Thank you for blessing us. We are going deeper and higher 
in you. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord. Amen. You may be seated. many of us are going to serve the Lord with obedience? Do you, do you think that certain things are not working because of disobedience? Anybody who feels that you are disobedient, God has told you some particular thing you are not obeying. Stand up. And God has told you, look, wait, sit down. Everybody can stand up because everybody is. Uh, when you do that, you 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 change the grace that is available. But I'm saying that you see, if you ask me, is there something the Lord has told me to do that I have not done? I can say there are some things that yes, I feel He has told me to do that I haven't done and or finished. You see, hmm. you know, but not that I've disobeyed him, but like I haven't been able to, to do them. But maybe you are here and you feel the Lord has told you to do something, but you have disobeyed him. I've not obeyed him. Stand up not obeyed him. In other words, you are in disobedience. Maybe the Lord told you, go to South Africa and you are in Ghana. Maybe the Lord told you, go to Bible school, but you don't go to Bible school. Or the Lord said to you, go to a mission, but you, 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 you don't want to be a mission. Or the Lord told you, be in full-time ministry, but you don't want to be in full-time ministry. Or the Lord told you, submit yourself to this person, but you are not submitting. Or the Lord told you, honor somebody, but you are not honoring. Or the Lord sent you somewhere, you are not doing it. Or the Lord told you, give an offering, but you don't give the offering. Or the Lord asked you for something, but you don't do it. That's what I mean. We all, we are, our lives are, we all have obeying and disobeying. But tonight, I'm just saying, if you are here, and you sense the Lord tell you, told you something, and clearly you are just moving on without doing it, disobeying him. Those are the people I'm asking you to stand for a moment. Come to the front. Now, I told you tonight is just a Bible lesson. So, it's not, don't expect to be praying everybody, and we are not going to be here for long, but just, I want to just pray with you for a moment, please. I am praying about disobedience. Why? Stretch out your hands and lift your hands up and just pray. Pray. Listen, another one is maybe the Lord has told you to tell the truth. Do you see? But you haven't told the truth. Or maybe the Lord has told you to go and say something that you know, but you haven't said it. I don't know. But like clearly disobeying. Yeah. Now I need you to just repent. I'm just helping you in the front here. I'm just helping you in the front. And online. Online, are you listening? Kneel down in the house. Kneel down in the house. Pray in the privacy of your room. Just kneel down where you are and repent. Receive it now. <laughs> Holy Spirit and his angels are here. In the realm of the spirit, receive
from the Lord turn around grace turn around grace turn around your weakness is taken away Maybe you are living in sin. You are living in... Somebody here, you are living in sin. And the Lord has told you and told you and told you that you are still continuing. I don't think you came to the front. I think you should also come. Oh, yes. Yes. Receive your deliverance. I see the angel of the Lord touching you. Oh yes. And deliver them. And deliver them. Tashambada, Tamalu, Bekita, Parado, Semishe, Pendere. Receive, receive. Watch and careful, careful. Receive. Adelemaka, Sobelikete, Tamode, Shabaka, Tamode. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. Ambakabala, Chebede, Chebede. Watch out, watch out, watch out. Careful. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Power belongs to God. I deliver you from the evil spirits that have followed you in your disobedience. Receive turnaround grace. Receive turnaround grace. Receive turnaround grace. Careful. Receive the grace to turn around. Receive grace to turn around. Yes, watch, 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 watch. Yeah. You know, I was praying for this one, but the power went into this one. Lift your hand. Receive yours. Padele me ke basa, pake de me de boko patare be de ki molenere. Pala madi ko bele de boshi balanda bala. Oh yes, I see somebody here. God has given you a very big ministry, or maybe you are even online. Maybe you are watching. You have a big ministry in the realm of the spirit. You are not just an ordinary pastor. You are a pastor who has achieved many great things in the realm of the spirit. Yes. That's who you are. That's who you are. But disobe- disobedience has made you nothing. Disobedience has made you nothing. Disobedience has made you nothing. In the realm of the spirit, you have more things. More things. More things. More things. Watch, watch. Thanks. 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 You know. Who who, who is this person? It's like you have a big ministry, but I don't know, you are nothing. You're called. You are called. You are called. Oh, yes. You are called, but you are nothing now. Just disobedience has made you nothing. Yeah, you are, you are nothing. Disobedience has made you nothing. Disobedience has made you nothing. 
Disobedience has made you nothing. Disobedience has made you nothing. Everyone standing. I feel disobedience have made some people nothing. Oh yes. Your hands in the air. Everyone. Everyone who is made into nothing by disobedience. By the grace and the power and the anointing. Receive your deliverance from that level of nothingness. That level of nothingness that is upon your life because of disobedience. In the name of Jesus, Savior of the world. Father, thank you for all that are being set free in this revival service. Obedience is coming to you and greatness is following Receive the supernatural help of God. In Jesus' name. Amen. You may go back to your seats. Can you believe this word? Disobedience has made you into what? Nothing. Yeah. Obedience will make you something great. Receive it according to your faith in Jesus' name. Yeah, that's, that's so great. That's so great. That's what all that God is saying today. Disobedience has made you nothing. Obedience will make you something very great. I pray does anybody have something that God is telling you to obey tonight? Hmm? Take. Do you have paper? You don't have paper anymore, you see. There's no paper. Take your phone. Take your phone. And write. Go to the notes. Go to notes or somewhere. And write secret notes. And write, disobedience made me nothing. Obedience makes me into something. And write one thing that the Spirit, you believe that the Holy Spirit is telling you to do. Just one thing. Just take the phone and write, disobedience made me into nothing. And obedience will make me into something. Then after that, I want you to write only one thing. Maybe there's just one thing that the Holy Spirit is telling you. From now, this one thing I am asking you to do. In fact, I don't even need to speak much. You already know what it is. How many know what it is already? Oh yes, you know, you know it already. I don't want to call you out and say, what is it? That's what the Spirit is saying. Oh yes. Oh yes. And write on your phone, disobedience made me into nothing. Obedience will make me into something. Yes. And write the one thing, just one thing that you feel the Holy Spirit wants you to do. You know, right now I'm, I'm personally on a mission. I feel God wants me to do something. So I think it's going to take me a few weeks to do that particular, but it's something that I've since January. Yeah, I'm trying to do something that I felt he told me to do in January and I'm just on it till I finish it. And it, I, it have a few, few more weeks to finish that particular thing. That's it. So I'm on it. Every day I'm on it. Obedience will make you into something. Disobedience will make you nothing. Obedience. Wow. Have you, have you got it? Now I want you to, and also online, please. Everybody, we are all together. Very much so, we are together. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Lift up your phone with your written statement. Father, I thank you for everyone here who's been turned into something great. 
through obedience. Obedience. May you receive the grace to become obedient to God in whatever He tells you. Whatever. Small things and big things. May you be obedient. Just obedient. Just obedient. Not something you feel you should do, but something you feel God is telling you or wants you to do. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and His power be upon you to obey Him to the very end. In Jesus' name. Amen. Take out your offering and come to the front. Who is holding the basket? Let's give our offering very quickly. Um, let's take out a phone offering. Everybody give an offering on your phone. Yeah, take out whatever you want to give tonight. Want to give 100, whatever. It's a blessing. You know, one, one of the times during the flow prayer meeting, we're having an offering time and I said, uh, somebody should give a thousand. And um, you know what I felt? You know why I said a thousand? Because the ministry is the greatest thing. It was about the ministry. Whenever it comes to the ministry, you now after salvation, the greatest is if God will let you work for him. Um, do, you want to work for, do you want to work for the Lord? I know you want to work for the Lord, isn't it? God also wants you to work for him. It's a privilege. It's a privilege. It's a privilege. You do it. After being saved, there's nothing to do on earth just to wait till you die. If God will give you something to do for him, then there's something useful. Other than that, he's just waiting to go to heaven. Amazing. Amazing, 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 amazing. So that's why I, I mentioned when I say thousand, thousand dollars, thousand CDs, thousand pounds, thousand, it's for those who have a value for the ministry in that way. Yeah, like it's a very great thing. There's no money, there's not ministry is not about money. If you want money, I will advise you to do, go to work, PhD, and all those things. I'm the number one person always making people do PhDs and whatever. If you come and sit in my office, you see me every day. I talk to PhD, doctor, lawyer, school, this, this, always. Every child that comes to me, I'm on it. I want them to go to school and do everything. Yes. I'm champion of that thing. champion of that and I want you also to serve the Lord whichever you do yeah there are some people that want to give 1,000 Ghanaian cities 1,000 of anything in terms of your wonderful value for the ministry as you plant this seed that through this seed God will help you to be obedient 
come to the front. I want to start with a thousand quickly. Just come. Because I believe that tonight there's some people for to do that. For the ministry. For the ministry. Just come. Sow your seed. Tap with your phone or come. I I feel that there's some preciousness about the ministry. Is Is the ministry precious to you? Is it precious to you? Yeah. You know, I wish for all my little children, I want that God will give you a town. God will give you a country. God will give you a place. And it's all yours. You'll be on it uh, for 40 years. Wow. Wow. I feel the anointing. Receive. Beautiful. Thank you, Jesus. That's all I'm teaching and praying for you. Who is this? Ah. What did you come to do here? Offering? I was lying on the floor here. Okay. Come back to me then. Come. Lift your hands up. Where's the oil? Oh, yes. Bless the child. Ministry is valuable for those who value it. It's everything. And it's not a job. Never think about ministry as a job. It's not a job. If you are looking for that, I beg you. The qualifications which I keep urging you to get, you use them to get a very good job. Yes. Not for the ministry, it's your heart. Yes, it's your love for Jesus. There are eight more people that I believe you are supposed to give a thousand. Yeah, I know you can't believe it. I'm not raising funds, but I feel that there are eight more people at least who to you the ministry is precious and want to sow that seed. I don't know who you are. Eight more people. sow that special seed tonight. The ministry is precious to you. This is what the Lord is saying. Let it be precious to you. Let my work be precious to you. Take my yoke. Take my yoke. Take my yoke. And let my work be precious to you. Oh yes. Let my work be precious to you. Amen. Have the eight people come? Huh? Seven? Oh, who is the last? It's eight. Beautiful. All right. Now, I'm sure someone wants to give 500 CDs. I don't know. If you are here like that, you can come. Now, 500 CDs, 200 CDs, come quickly. 500 CDs, anything you are giving over there as a special offering this evening. You are saying, ministry, you are precious to me. Just 500 Ghana cities support the work of the Lord. Sing that song again for me. Let me tell you what's on my mind. Young lady, come and me pray. Esther, isn't it? I remember your name. 
Come, I'm going to pray for you. All right? God loves you, okay? Do you believe it? That's why he made me remember your name. And that's why he wants me to pray for you. Lift up your hands and whatever you want from God, whatever you want from God, the realm of the spirit sometimes you are crying, sometimes you are laughing sometimes you are crying, sometimes you are laughing you can't even tell whether you cry or laugh every day but that says the Lord I have blessed you and remembered you because I bless and I remember listen to what the Lord is saying, he says I bless and I remember. I bless and I remember. I bless and I remember. (laughs) God remembers. God remembers. Thank God that he remembers. He remembers everything. And he blesses. I bless and I remember. Hmm? Okay. Jenny, come. Last time I called for you, but you weren't here. Do you know that? Come. Thank you. Somebody said to me, You didn't touch me. And then I started breathing heavily, described and shaking uncontrollably. There's something, there's a power or the angel, maybe the angel, the power of the Holy Spirit. It's a real thing. You can watch it closely, like look at it very closely. It's not psychological, it's something, some kind of a power power of the Holy Ghost. Receive the power in your life. Receive your healing. Jesus. Yes. Yes. Nice. Sando Bashi Molebe Sendo Rabakasa Balbasha Thank you. Now receive the healing. I see God healing you. Healing you. Anybody who wants restoration, you feel that you need to be restored and healed, lift your hands. Receive healing right now. Healing from I don't know what. Healing from I don't know what. But God knows what. And restoration. Receive it. Healing. Receive it. Healing. Receive it. Healing. Receive it healing. Receive it healing. Stand up over here, all of you, this this side, section here. Stand up. Yes, be careful. Receive. Power. Power. Watch, watch them. There's power here. There's power here. There's power here. Yeah, bring bring them to me over there. There's power here. Watch out. Ish. There's power here. There's power here. Receive it. Take it. Take it. yes. Whatever troubles you, receive healing. Receive it. Receive it. Oh, yes. Thanks. 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 
Till tomorrow, if we continue, where, where are we? we are taking offering, we want to give 200 CDs, 200 and 100 CDs. Come, please, everywhere, hundred dollars, hundred CDs. You are watching online, you are part of this service. This is a special for, for the ministry, Lord. I want to obey you in my ministry, I want to obey you in my service to you. I want obedience. I want now supernatural power to come into my life. Oh, yes. I'm going to obey you, my God. 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 Oh, yes. Come and sow your seed. This is as little as $10 when you convert it. 100 CDs is about $10 now. Come and sow your seed. How many know that there's power here? Oh yes. There's power. Sow your seed in the midst of this power. Amen. Sow your seed in the midst of this power. You know I'm hearing the word apostle. Apostolic. I feel God is making some people apostles. Yes. The grace that he's put on me. Do you see? To build churches. He's giving it to you. Believe it, you will experience it. Receive it as a word from the Lord for you. Yes. Receive it now. Not the grace to be a prophet, the grace to be an apostle, a builder of churches. Bring her to me. Maybe she's the one receiving it. I don't know who she is. Oh yes. Oh yes, that's the power. See how she's shaking. It's not psychological. What psychological? What do you do philosophy? What psychological can, can do this? Power belongs to God. Oh yes. Be transformed. Be transformed. In Jesus' name. Those of you who believe you are called to be apostles, stand up.
Lift your hands, apostles. Now, if you are here and you don't believe you are called to be apostles, it means that you are not interested in the grace that is here. Receive it. That's the grace that is here. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive grace. This is the grace that is here. This is the grace that is here. This is the grace that we have here to build churches. You build churches, many churches, many churches, many churches, many churches, many churches. Receive grace. Receive grace. Receive grace. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Lift your hand, take in a deep breath. Father, thank you for the apostolic grace. For those watching online, I thank you that you have poured out your spirit upon all of us without even touching, without even touching, taking a deep breath and receive the power to build churches wherever in many countries, anywhere, towns, amongst the poor, amongst the rich, in any land, receive the grace. Jesus name receive it now in Jesus name now lay your hands on your head like this at home lay your hands on your head lay your hands on your head Father thank you for those at home that are receiving apostolic graces apostolic grace the oil of the house the power watch out please Padovra Catabala, no man de Berekete Bala da Bandola Babara, Mama Bashando la main de Beke Barada, Ole de Co, 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 Commando la Bekete Lebora de Lebada Cabala no Valeri. Lay hands on your head and receive the grace of the apostle. Receive it, receive it, receive it, receive it, receive it. Receive the grace of the apostle. Apostolic grace. Apostolic graces. Apostolic graces. Apostolic graces. Apostolic graces. Apostolic graces. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Oh yes. Receive it. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm laying hands on you. You know why? Because the Holy Spirit told me to lay hands on the people. The other day I was there and the Lord said to me, please lay hands on people. So now I always want to lay hands on people because he told me to lay hands. You see, this is obedience. Obey me. Just lay hands on the people. 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 Lay your hands on the people. They will be gifted because you laid hands on them. 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 Lay hands on the people. 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 On the people, careful now, careful now. Lay hands on the people, 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 lay hands on the people. Lay hands on the people. Lay hands on the people. Mandala manda banana medo de bedere. Lay hands on the people. 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 Pale moda patilo de mandala makabala de lebede. 
This row here, this row, come, I can't reach you, come. Lay hands on the people. Yeah, yeah, just line up here, quickly. Lay hands on the people. Lay hands on the people. Just that row, just that row, just that row. Lay hands on the people. Mandola, make a bully, man, did man, deliver, Listen, you know what is being imparted now? Apostolic grace. Lay hands on the people. Lay hands on the people. Lay hands on the people. From nothing to something. From nothing to something. Keep watching. It's like a movie. Mando Bacada. From nothing to something. Lay hands on the people. Lay hands on the people. Lay hands on the people. Keep watching. Are you watching? Andala Mandolo. From nothing to something. Keep watching. Keep watching. Keep watching. Keep watching. Apostolic graces. Apostolic graces. Apostolic graces. Apostolic graces. Lay hands on the people. Lay hands on the people. You are a mighty builder of churches. Mando Capasando. Mendi Simbolando. Lay Bredele Musa. Lay Grebe Lobregeles. Shiva Lambalambro. Receive mighty apostolic. I'm telling you something. I'm telling you the gift God has given us over here. I'm telling you the gift God has given us over here. I'm telling you the gift God has given us over here. Receive that gift. It is supernatural. It is supernatural. It is supernatural. It is supernatural. The gift of God. The gift of God. The gift of God. Receive it now. 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 Oh, Madame Mando. Mende de Mendo. Mende de Mende. Receive the gift of God. He said, lay hands on the people. 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 Lay hands on the people. Lay hands on the people. Mamba da mandola baka balele. Mamba de gebola manzana mandale beke balende de de. Receive apostolic graces. Receive apostolic graces. Receive apostolic graces. That is all that we have here. Oil, 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 oil. Take it now. 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 It's flowing. It's flowing, it's flowing, it's flowing. Watch out, it's flowing, it's flowing, it's flowing, it's flowing, it's flowing, it's flowing. Receive apostolic graces, receive apostolic graces. Mandole Masham Buramin de Bezino Lomondala Mandala Bandala Bandala. I hear in the spirit from nothing to something. You see, many people that are discounted. And I, I, I describe as nothing. I shall be something. And you see, God is showing me something right now. It is the anointing of the apostle. But the door to the anointing, the miracle, supernatural anointing of the apostle is the preaching of the apostle. Is the seeds of preaching of the apostle. Obeying in preaching the words of an apostle. You see, that is the door to the apostolic oil. And so if you can receive those words and those words become your word, you have entered the door of a great apostolic anointing and oil. If the words are your words, if you meditate on them, soak them until those words are your words, they come from you with ease. They come from the depths of your heart with ease then you will have entered the door of the apostle and you will walk in that great anointing, that wonderful anointing, so precious, that makes everything so easy. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, yes. Thank you, Jesus. Please take your seats. I believe strongly that we are giving an offering right now. Many of us want to sow a special seed of about 
what do we have now? 50 CDs or 20 CDs? 20 CDs, 10 CDs, 5 CDs. No one CD for now. Come and just plant your seed. Very quickly, please. You know, honestly, today I told you that today was just a, a short Bible lesson. But we are being blessed mightily with this short Bible lesson. I don't know if I came to the right church. some of the other bishops helping with their offering come and bring another basket to this side two baskets here please because we are closing bring two more baskets online you are watching please give generously the method of giving is right there on the screen Baskets want to give one CD, one of anything, plus your boosters. Come right now and give one of anything. We need to close. I told you that it's a Bible lesson. Beautiful Bible. How many enjoy Bible lessons? Only four people. I think I'm in the wrong place. I'm going home. Have you given your boosters? It's every standing. In two weeks' time, we have a concert. And um, it's going to be an anointed concert. Some, you know, our first love music is one of the anointings. Now, in the realm of the spirit, there are many take the madman of Gadara in the realm of the spirit he had 6,000 compartments to contain 6,000 different demons 
So it shows you that in the realm of the spirit, you have many compartments compatible with receiving different spirits and graces and anointings. That's why one person can have many gifts. And often when there is one gift, there's more gifts. Rarely do you have one gift. Rarely do you have one gift. Rarely. That's why in the Bible there was prophets and teachers. Paul said he was an apostle and a prophet. Rarely do you have one gift. Because all the anointing oil is made up of different components. And rarely does one person have one gift. And that's why the music in the church is also one of the gifts. Yes. It's part of the big oil. I hope you have been enjoying the anointing of that music. That can make you pray for hours and hours on end. You should make your own reggae compilations of our music. Because you see, even before we have, a, I have a reggae collection that goes for five hours. Yeah, I have my own Christian reggae. When I put it on, I call, it's called reggae collection, five hours. When you put play, it will be five hours before it finishes. So you need to know. One of the compartments of the anointing, Bible calls it the spirit of grace and supplication, is a grace to pray for a long time. And to pray for a long time, you need hands and you need music. But if you haven't learned how to play music and pray for hours and hours, the apostolic grace and an oil is not going to be easily given to you or you can't work with it because you need to pray for a long time. I mean, I, I think so. Maybe you can try doing it by praying with a short time. I don't know. Try different things. So that's why when I said we have a concert in two weeks, that is God willing, not this Sunday, the Sunday after. It, it, it's, it's, it's one of the, or well, it's not, you see, people think, oh, they are just playing and making themselves happy and whatever, but it is all part of the anointing. You don't know how it's connected. How the young people fell in love with the music and played it all over the world. And they were drawn in their hearts as the word of God was sung to them by the music. It's one of the special anointings that we have. Oh yes, don't miss out on that. It's something wonderful that we are enjoying. Yes. What a blessing. Your hands in the air. Father, thank you. We are enjoying your presence. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save. He will deliver. He will rejoice over thee with joy. May the Lord rejoice over you with joy. Throughout this week, may you enjoy an angel in your office. An angel in your house. An angel in your room. An angel in your car. An angel on top of your car. May you sense his presence all through the week. May your eyes be anointed this week. May you see and begin to hear and to see and to hear and to see and to hear from the Holy Spirit. May you walk on in grace and oil and anointing in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for all that you have accomplished in the realm of the Spirit. Now go home with apostolic graces. From nothing, you become something. From nobody, you become somebody. Because of a supernatural involvement. May 100 enemies fall before you. 100 devils surrounding you and challenging you and accusing you. May they fall before you supernaturally. Jesus Christ of Nazareth and everyone said Amen but it's not over but it's not over as you say Amen the how many can feel the presence of God you see, that's, how do you sing that song the presence something what song do we have 
Yeah. Lord, like midst of thee, he is a mighty God. Oh, yes. He will save. He will save. Put that scripture on. Rejoice over thee with joy. God in the midst. God in the midst of thee.
His presence will now defend you at work, at home. His presence will challenge what is challenging you. His presence will contend against those that contend against you and fight against those that fight against you. Receive the grace to experience his presence through this week. Loma Cruza Matuba Remeso Ramandala Matusa Pico Tupali Baribo Loboca Palombre Zapata Mashu Palamba Simo Catere Mamandala Palombre que te prebanda Palma Zombre Medeshima week you will hear good news you will experience his presence all through the week you will have the upper hand you will be strengthened Ah, for I hear in the spirit the apostolic oil apostolic grace it has been imparted all the components of this oil in different types of ways being received and walking in it. Lighthouse Chapel International and all the churches are becoming confident in this oil. The grace that has been given are becoming stronger about it and more sure and strengthening themselves in the strength wherewith the Lord has strengthened them to fight on, to march on, to press on, to build on. To believe in what God has given them. And to be strong in the grace which has been given. Be strong in that grace. Be strong in that grace. Be strong in that grace. For the Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. Now receive of the Lord a mighty salvation and a mighty deliverance. For the Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. For the last time, the Lord thy God in the midst of thee. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is a mighty God. He will save thee, will rejoice over thee.
presence, Lord. Your presence. That's what I need. That is what I come on, lift your hands, sing it as we go home. Everywhere I go, everywhere. Is this your prayer tonight? Every place, every place that I am, I want to feel the presence of God standing right by me, standing right. Come on, give the Lord a shout of praise. Come on, celebrate the anointing, the apostolic grace, the prophetic anointing. And what God is doing in our church. Amen. Thank you so much, pastors. Why don't you tell your neighbor, I've been touched today. God touched me today. Amen. Let's share the grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship, communion, participation of the Holy Spirit. Be with us. It's not my fault. They're not helping me. Which includes all the important people for your life. And the first love of the spirit of power, of love, and of a sound mind. Be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Many are called. One member. God bless you. See you next weekend.